But those who dismiss Gandhi's accomplishments because they were only against the British are also overlooking how ruthless and brutal British colonial rule could be. The history of British rule on the subcontinent belies this myth, especially their treatment of the Patans along the Hindu Kush with its strategic Khyber Pass, where the British tried to control by fear the gateway from Afghanistan to India for a century. In 1842, the British attempted to secure the area by sending their 4,500-man army of the Indus through the Khyber Pass. One survivor made it to Fort Jalalabad. But the British were determined to subdue the Muslim tribesmen, the Patans, who were said to be one of the most warlike people in the world. So were, it is so easily forgotten, the British. The British sent expedition after expedition into the Patan Hills, an area known to the British colonial army around the world as the Grim. In the 19th century, they shelled the Patan villages. In the 20th century, they bombed them from the air. Thousands of Patans were flogged or otherwise beaten, but Patan snipers fired ancient handmade rifles from somewhere in the rocky crests. Then in the 1930s, something happened that made them more dangerous, more threatening than the British Army had ever imagined. The Patans joined up with Gandhi's nonviolence movement. The British knowingly asserted this was a trick, that Patans were not capable of nonviolence. They sealed off the area and for two decades brutalized the nonviolent resistors. Patans were shot down in large groups, tortured, jailed, flogged, imprisoned for life in distant Indian Ocean penal colonies, or hanged. The British Army burned their fields and their houses. There was no due process of law in the Patan zone. Their leader, Abdul Ghaffar Khan, called Badshah Khan, the Khan of Khans, was almost the complete opposite of Gandhi, the gentle Hindu. A photograph of the two of them appeared to be manipulated, for Badshah Khan, the Patan aristocrat, was a mountainous man with broad shoulders and a square, strong-featured face, surrounded by the thick hair of his head and beard. Gandhi, from the humble side of a middle-class caste, barely came up to his shoulders and was frail, and his baldness gave roundness to his small head. But they were firm allies, determined to build through nonviolence an independent India for Muslims and Hindus together. In 1929, a young man who had heard Khan speak gave him the idea of organizing in a way that was consistent with Patan tradition. And so he recruited the world's first nonviolent army, the Kadai Kidmatgars, the servants of God. Any Patan could join Khan's army by swearing an oath to renounce violence and vengeance, to forgive oppressors, and to embrace a simple life. Khan quickly recruited 500 soldiers who opened schools and maintained order at gatherings and demonstrations. Khan went from town to town, urging Patans to rise up in civil disobedience. In Peshawar, when Khan was arrested by the British, the entire town's population took the oath and joined his army. The region was stopped by a general strike and the British sent in the army with armored vehicles. When they began firing into the crowd, the demonstrators stood stoically. Some were shot many times. One boy walked up to a soldier and asked him to shoot him, and the soldier shot the boy dead. As people fell, others moved forward to be shot. The British continued shooting for six hours, 
and then began the work of hauling away the bodies and burning them. The result was that 80,000 new volunteers took the oath and joined Khan's army. One platoon of an elite Indian regiment, the Graval Rifles, refused to fire, and every man in the outfit was sentenced to stiff prison terms, one for life. And even when negotiations forced the British to release political prisoners, all of the Gravalis were made to serve their full terms. The British tried to provoke the proud Pathan soldiers into breaking their vows of nonviolence. Huge, powerfully built men were publicly stripped, humiliated, beaten with rifle butts, poked with bayonets, thrown in cesspools. Some killed themselves to avoid breaking their vow. In prison, Badshah Khan explained to his jailer that he was a nonviolent follower of Gandhi. The British deputy commissioner asked him what he would be doing if he hadn't met Gandhi, and Khan put his large hands on the two bars in front of him and easily bent them apart. Khan's stated concept of Islam was this. The Holy Prophet Muhammad came into this world and taught us that man is a Muslim who never hurts anyone by word or deed, but who works for the benefit and happiness of God's creatures. Belief in God is to love one's fellow men. For putting these dangerous ideas into practice, the gentle British held him for a total of 30 years, one-third of his life, serving various prison terms, most of it in solitary confinement, usually under a charge of sedition. <laughs>